the good treats of God, do you desire the good treats that God has for you? Trick or treat. Last week, you recall that I opened my sermon with that familiar Halloween phrase of trick or treat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I then went on to preach about mankind's great adversary yes. and how the devil is always playing a game of Halloween with mankind. All right. All right. As we saw the devil, he is very cunning and he will do everything he can to deceive you into falling for his tricks. <laughs> his primary objective is to lure as many as he can away from God and to drag them down to the pit with him. Yeah. So this week, keeping the idea of the Halloween holiday in mind, mm -hmm. I ask you, trick or treat, mm -hmm. which do you want? Mm -hmm. yeah. The devil offers mankind treat after treat. Mm -hmm. But as we have seen, the devil's treats are nothing but tricks. Yeah. Yeah. The devil in no way can bless you. The reason why the devil in no way can bless you is because to be blessed means one is spiritually happy. Yeah, yeah. The devil is bitter. The devil is an upset being mm -hmm. that has no truth in him. The devil has no love in him. So how in the world can the devil make you happy spiritually? All right. All right. All right. As children hope to get nothing but the good stuff on Halloween, <laughs> when they go and they knock on someone's doors, right. today I tell you that God has all the good stuff for you. Mm -hmm. God has all the good stuff for you at his house. And the Lord, he desires for you to come by his house. The Lord desires for you to knock on his door yeah, yeah. so that he can give you all of the good treats mm -hmm. that he has for you. Mm -hmm. So today I ask you the question, will you go and knock on God's door? to receive these good treats or will you continue to be deceived by the devil mm -hmm. and go by the devil's house yeah. for the so-called treats mm -hmm. that the devil has? What will you do? All right. Let's take a moment today to look at these treats of the Lord so that you can choose wisely as to which house you will choose to go to. Let's see which house you would rather go to by the end of today's message. Right. Will you go to God's house or will you go to the devil's house? All right. All right. In the Gospels, Jesus, he directs believers to go knock on the door of the Lord if we desire the good things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. In the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, we'll see in the seventh and we'll see in the eighth verse that Jesus specifically states, ask and it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Seek, Jesus said, and you will find. He then said, knock mm -hmm. and it will be open to you. Yeah. Jesus, he said, for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be open. Mm -hmm. Today, I want you to hear from me and I want you to understand that the Lord has no false treats for you oh. at his house. All right. All right. The Lord is not trying to fool you. God is not trying to deceive you. God is not trying to trick you as the devil is always trying to do. You see, God, he has nothing but good treats at his house that he truly wishes to give away. And he chooses to do so liberally. 
As Jesus tells us again, there in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 11th verse, mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things yeah. to those who ask him? Again, God has good treats for you and he desires to give you these good treats. He does not want to hold back. God wants to give these good treats to you. Liberally, all the Lord seeks from you is to come by his house and to knock on his door. Will you go by God's house and will you knock on his door? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell you today, mm -hmm. however, that it does not seem that many people are running to God's house. Watch it now. Watch it. In fact, I would tell you that people are hardly even slow walking All right. to God's house. All right. Now, I want you to understand when I say God's house here, that I am not talking about a church building or a place of worship. All right. I am talking about where the Lord actually resides. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about heaven here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you seeking for the Lord? Yeah. Are you seeking for where God resides? Mm -hmm. In other words, are, are, are you seeking for heaven? Yeah. Are you trying to go and are you trying to knock on heaven's door? Mm -hmm. I began to wonder today, why aren't people going to try and knock on heaven's door. Right. Why aren't people walking? Why aren't people running to mm -hmm. the gates of heaven? Right. Why aren't people running? Why aren't people walking to the house of God? Mm -hmm. Now, I believe we saw the answer to that question in my sermon last week. There are many people skipping past the Lord's house because the devil is doing everything that he possibly can mm -hmm. to trick people into staying away from the gates of heaven. Right. The devil, he will scheme. The devil, he will lie about God's house. Yes, yes. And he will speak about God's house in a manner to where none will desire to ever go by the Lord's house. He speaks about God's house in a manner to scare away people from giving God a visit. Well, all right. To those that believe we saw that the devil will twist the very word of God in such a manner mm -hmm. to hinder the child of God from visiting the Lord's house. Well, all right. To those who are of no faith, we saw that Satan will tell them that he has all of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. For Halloween purposes, Satan will tell them that he has all the good candy yeah. and that God has nothing but raisins and vegetables, mm -hmm. things that they will not desire. <laughs> In other words... The devil is enticing those of the world by saying that his treats are better than God's treats. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let us look at this for a moment. Right. Let's take a look at the two main treats mm -hmm. that the devil has and that God has. Right. Let's look at the devil's big treat and then let's look at God's big treat. Mm -hmm. And then decide which is better. Again, in his temptation of Jesus in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we saw the devil last week tempt Jesus in two ways. I left the third way out for this purpose because we're going to look at it this week. Mm -hmm. We are shown in the eighth and the ninth verse that the devil took Jesus up exceedingly high on a mountain yeah. and that the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, Satan said to Jesus, all these things will I mm -hmm. give you. Said, I will give you these things if you will fall down and worship me. 
I want you to notice there that the devil was enticing Jesus with the world mm -hmm. and that he was enticing Jesus with the riches mm -hmm. of the world. This was the devil's big treat. Mm -hmm. The world and its riches. Yeah, yeah. Now, there are some people that believe the world to be the sweetest and the best treat that they could ever have. Mm -hmm. There are people that thirst. There are people that hunger. There are people that lust for the riches of this world. Yeah. Yes, Yet what I know and what the devil certainly knows as well is that this world is simply temporary. Yeah. All right. What I mean by this is that the devil knows just like I know mm -hmm. that this world actually has no value. Come on, come on. This world is not valuable at all. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us plainly in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel, not to lay up for ourselves treasure in this world mm -hmm. because the treasure will either be stolen, mm -hmm. it will rust or it will be destroyed. Oh. So again, this world, the treasures of this world, it has absolutely no value. And Jesus was letting us know that this world, again, the devil's treasure mm -hmm. has no value because it is going to perish. Yeah, yeah, all right. We see this verified for us in the book of Revelation in the 21st chapter mm -hmm. where this world will pass away yes, sir. when God brings forth a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. All right. So again, I tell you today that the devil knows that the treat that he's offering is nothing but a bag of rocks and a bag of worms. Yeah. But this is the thing about the devil. Yeah. The devil does not care. Right. He will continue to offer this bag of rocks mm -hmm. and this bag of worms. Yeah. And the devil will continue to offer it as if it is a bag of gold yeah. to whoever will listen to him, to whoever will fall for it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So again, I feel I must let all of you know this information mm -hmm. so that you don't pass by the house that truly has all of the good stuff mm -hmm. for the house that has nothing but a bag of rocks and a bag of worms. All right. All right. While Satan lies and deceives about the house of God, mm -hmm. Jesus came to our world and he delivered the truth mm -hmm. about the house of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us there in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 20th verse, mm -hmm. he tells us lay up our treasures in heaven That's right. because heaven, unlike this world, mm -hmm. heaven cannot be taken away. Heaven, it cannot be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Those are not my words. Those are the words of Jesus. Wow. Yeah. While the devil is busy lying and deceiving, while he's busy trying to hinder and deter people mm -hmm. from going to God's house, saying that heaven is a figment of our imagination, that heaven is not real, that God has nothing good for you. All right. We find again in the 14th chapter of John's gospel that Jesus was again speaking the truth about God's house. Yeah. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yes, Jesus was saying, hey, if if God's house was not real, I would have told you that it don't exist. But Jesus said it does exist. And in God's house are many mansions, Jesus said. 
Jesus then tells us there in the 14th chapter of John's gospel that he knows the way to heaven. Mm -hmm. Not only does he say he knows the way to heaven, he said he's going to come and that he's going to take us yeah. to God's house. Amen. Wow. Jesus said that he's going to take us to God's house so that we could dwell there eternally. Yes, Lord. I believe the devil knows for certain that the Lord and his house is real. I believe that the devil has seen it. All right. And I believe that the devil even knows that God and his house will live on forever. Which is why he is so relentless mm -hmm. in trying to deceive us. All right. All right. Which is why he is so relentless in trying to keep people from going to God's house. He yeah. does not want you to enjoy the good treats right. that God has for you. All right. Just as I said last week. To all of those that desire the treats of God, we must not allow ourselves to be enticed by that old crooked devil. Mm -hmm. We cannot fall for his tricks. Mm -hmm. We must endure. Oh, yeah. We must endure Satan. We must endure the wiles of yeah. the devil. Mm -hmm. So someone may ask today, well, what is the benefit of, of enduring? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the benefit of enduring yes, in resisting the devil? We will see the benefit to resisting and withstanding the tricks of the devil here in my key verse for today. Mm -hmm. Again, here in the first chapter of James, there in the 12th verse, James writes that when we endure, All right. he says, when we endure the temptations of the devil, he said that we are blessed again to be blessed is to be spiritually happy. There are treats for us to receive from the Lord. Yeah. that God wants to give to us to right. make us spiritually happy. Mm -hmm. In other words, there are blessings yeah. Yeah. that God wants you to have mm -hmm. so that you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. Now, this statement that James makes here in the first chapter, mm -hmm. this is not a statement that James came up with on his own. All right. I want you to understand that James actually got this from Jesus, mm -hmm. who was his brother. All right. All right. Jesus, he had taught his closest disciples at the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. as it is recorded in the Gospels. He taught them this very message that James shares with us today. All right. All right. You'll find in the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. And specifically in the 11th and the 12th verse there in the fifth chapter of Matthews, right. we'll see James, or uh, we'll see Jesus say there, blessed are those who are persecuted mm -hmm. for righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Yeah, yeah. There, I tell you, are rewards for us. Yes, sir. There are rewards, there are treats for us if we choose to endure. If we endure the temptations of the devil, mm -hmm. if we endure the temptations of Satan, mm -hmm. Jesus said that we are blessed. Wow. There is a reward. There are blessings for us mm -hmm. when we turn to him, when we run to his house, when we walk 
to God's house, there are blessings, there are treats for us. Will you endure the devil telling you, hey, don't go there. I got the good stuff. All right. All right. Will you endure the wiles of the devil for the good treats of God? Let's look at some of these treats. The first of the treats that I want to mention here to you today is told to us actually throughout scripture, Mm -hmm. but I want to reference here a verse from John's first epistle. All right. In first John, the first chapter of first John and the ninth verse. All right. I know where you're going. Come on. We will see John right if we confess our sins. Is all of us there? I want to make sure all of us see that. He said, if we confess our sins, he, the he that John is speaking of, there is God. He says, God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He then says, God is just Mm -hmm. to do what there? To forgive. To forgive us. And to cleanse us mm, from, all. from all unrighteousness. Oh, preach it, son. Preach it. it says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow. We're talking about treats of God, yes, sir. Yes, the sir. good treats. God is faithful and just to forgive us, to mm. cleanse us from, mm. from all Not some, but all of our unrighteousness. Yes, Lord. I want you to hear today that when you are not enticed to stay away from God's house, but instead you go and you knock on his door, Mm -hmm. one of the treats that you will receive from God is his love. Yeah, yeah. His faithfulness, mm-hmm. God's mercy. Yeah. See, I want you to hear today that there is nothing false about this. There is nothing false about God's love. Mm-hmm. You see, God is love. God is the very definition of love. I know. Yes, sir. God's love is the very first treat. Mm-hmm. that he wants to give out to you. All if you right. go to his house mm-hmm. in the Lord's love, we see that this treat is God lifting the heavy weight of the guilt of our sins from off of our shoulders. Yeah. God wants to take that weight from you. God wants to take those burdens off of your shoulders. Mm-hmm. In other words, the Lord wants to take away our sins. God wants to take away all of our burdens. He wants to take those things all away from us so that we don't have to carry it around Mm -hmm. so that we don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Now, when David spoke of this treat, David said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. David said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. God's treats truly are things that will make you free and things that will make you happy in your soul. I don't know if you hear me here today. What's sad is that so many people overlook the truly sweet treat that is God's love, that is his mercy, that is his forgiveness, because so many of us are blinded. We are blinded to God's love. We are blinded to his mercy. We are blinded to his forgiveness. We are blinded by the devil to the fact that we are even in need of God's love, his mercy and his forgiveness. There are so many who actually feel the weight of all the wrongs that they have done. Mm -hmm. But because they are blinded by the devil, 
they don't even take those feelings. They don't take that weight. They don't take it to God's house All right. because they are allowing the devil to keep them mm -hmm. from going and knocking on the gates of heaven and talking to the Lord. There are many that feel that they can do nothing about this heavyweight. So mm -hmm. all they end up doing is trying to carry around that heavy load all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And they do nothing but add on more weight mm -hmm. and more burdens. Mm -hmm. So while the devil is so busy offering the riches of the world, ask yourself, when has he ever offered to lift that weight mm -hmm. off of your shoulders? Mm -hmm. When has the devil ever offered to lift the weight of the guilt of sin from off of anybody's shoulders? Yes, yes. Never. Mm -hmm. He much rather they stay there. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be weighed down. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be crushed yeah. by the guilt of sins. He wants yeah. you to be crushed by that weight. Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you, the devil does not care. <laughs> All the devil has to offer is a world that will do nothing but add more and more weight that will do nothing but add more and more burdens onto your shoulders. Right. And yet he offers it as if it is a treat. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for the tricks of the devil. Amen. Are you sure you want to be going to the devil's house for a treat of more guilt and more burdens to carry around on your shoulders? Well, I don't know about you, but that will be a big no thank you from me. All right. All right. I don't want any of that. All right. And I certainly hope that you don't want any of that as well. Again, I tell you that God has treats for us. Yeah. Again, I tell you that God has blessings for us yeah. if we go and if we knock on his door. When you are not enticed to stay away from God's house, but you go and you knock on his door, there is another treat that the Lord wants to give to you. Mm -hmm. And we see that James writes about it in the first chapter again of James. Mm -hmm. James writes of uh, this treat to us. And we'll see that this treat is actually God's favor in giving good and perfect gifts to those that come knocking at his door. Again, we see that God wants to give us his gifts and then he wants to, to give us his good gifts at all times. And he wants to do so liberally. James says that they're in the fifth verse that God is a liberal giver and will give to us liberally without reproach is what James said. We then see him say there in the 17th verse, James writes of the Lord. He says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation mm -hmm. or shadow of turning is what James writes. Mm -hmm. Now, let me make this clear to you. Every good gift that you have ever received, mm -hmm. it was a gift. It was a blessing that came from God. We are in the first chapter of James, bro. Mm -hmm. Every good gift you have ever received came from the Lord. Yes, yes. Just think about that for a moment. We could just use this morning for an example. All of us here today. We could just count the ways that God has already blessed us on this day. This day for me just started a few hours ago when I got out of bed, but God has already blessed me in many ways. And, and I tell you that he's already done the same for you as well. We have our health. We have our strength. As I often pray, and I imagine that you pray the same thing, we are in our right mind. Amen. Those are blessings, right? Yeah. Yeah. We were able to see the light of another day. Yes, we saw the sun shining, so it may, it may be cloudy for some, but you can still see the light of another day. That's fine. 
It may be raining from some, but that's a blessing from God as well. Me and mom, as we was coming along the way, we was looking at all the fall colors, Mm -hmm. looking at God's beauty, beholding it. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful blessing. That is truly a treat. I tell you today. We take these gifts, Mm. these good gifts from God. We often take them for granted. But I can assure you that the devil Mm -hmm. can't offer you such good gifts that God gives to us. I assure you that as we take these good gifts from God, the devil won't offer you these good gifts. The devil couldn't care less about you having your health. The devil couldn't care less about you having your strength. The devil couldn't care less if you are in your right mind or not. The devil couldn't care less if you saw the light of another day. Again, I tell you, the devil does not care about you. Now you recall that last week I said that the devil, he studies you mm-hmm. and that he studies you intently like a chess master. Mm-hmm. And he does this with the frame of mind on how he can attack you yeah. and how he can bring you down, how he can destroy you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then there's God on the other hand. All right. Then there is God who knows your down sitting mm-hmm. and he knows your uprising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just as David said, mm-hmm. the Lord knows you and he understands your thoughts afar off. But God doesn't know you with the intent of bringing you down, Mm -hmm. with the intent on attacking you, with the intent on destroying you. No, God has intentions of giving you his good gifts. God studies you with the intent on giving you his perfect, his unique gifts Mm -hmm. that he has crafted. Mm-hmm. That he has designed specifically for you. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. Now I'm someone who received this perfect and unique gift mm-hmm. just this year. Oh. And I tell you, when God gives you his perfect and his unique gifts that's fit just for you, you will know when it happens. Mm-hmm. You will know that it's perfect. You will feel it in your spirit that everything, why wow, this is perfect. Yes, sir. Everything is going smoothly. This is perfect. Mm-hmm. You will know, you will recognize when the Lord has blessed you with his perfect gifts mm-hmm. because it fits you to a T. Yes, sir. Yes, In the book of Isaiah, Mm -hmm. scripture proclaims of the Lord that the Lord will guide you continually Mm -hmm. and that he will satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. Mm -hmm. Scripture proclaims you shall be like a watered garden. Scripture proclaims that you will be like a spring of water Mm -hmm. whose waters do not fail. Well, One of the greatest treats of God that so many of us do not recognize, that so many of us do not realize, Mm -hmm. is something that we enjoy, and we enjoy it without even recognizing Mm -hmm. it. His good and his perfect gifts, they constantly strengthen us. Mm -hmm. They constantly satisfy us, not simply physically, Mm-hmm. but in our soul. All right. All this right. is God's treat to us, his favor, mm-hmm. strengthening us, giving us strength and blessing us in our spirit, yes. in our soul. Do you know how wonderful it is mm-hmm. to be blessed in your soul? Mm-hmm. When we are blessed in our spirit, when we are blessed in our soul, we ought to rejoice. Yeah. Our spirit is moved. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Our spirit is satisfied. Our spirit is happy. There is nothing better than a happy spirit. There is nothing better than a happy soul. Right. The world can't give you a happy spirit. The world can't give you a happy soul. The devil can't give you a happy spirit. He doesn't know happiness. The world, the devil cannot give you a happy soul. Again, he doesn't know the love to give you a happy soul. I want you to understand today that it is truly a treat that God is faithful to us, Mm -hmm. that God loves us and that we are highly favored in his eyes. Our soul is well taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that is truly a special treat from the Lord. We'll see here as we continue to look at James, that James, he then tells us of the greatest of treats. Mm -hmm. He tells us of the greatest of treats that we will receive when we have endured, when we have overcome the temptations of the devil and when we have gone and knocked on God's doors. James, he again said there in my key verse, he said that when we are approved by God, that there is a reward of the crown of life. that will be given to all of those who love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do all of us see that there? Do all of us see this wonderful Mm -hmm. treat? Mm -hmm. He said that when we are approved by God, there is a reward of the crown of life. I tell you today that with each treat that we get from the Lord, Mm -hmm. blessing after blessing, Mm -hmm. they just get better and better and better. There is no greater treat that you and I can receive than the crown of life. This treat is so special that Jesus had to come to our world Mm -hmm. and he had to teach of this treat. He had to preach of this treat. And he even invited people to come to God's house and receive this great treat. And to think the devil is sitting here offering a temporary treat. Mm -hmm. That is a bag of rocks (laughs) and a bag of worms. He's offering those treats as his big treat. Mm where God is offering an eternal home. God is offering an eternal life of peace, Mm -hmm. an eternal life of joy as his big treat. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me which one is better. (laughs) The bag of rocks and worms or the bag of eternal life. Yeah. of peace mm-hmm. and joy. Yeah. You tell me which one is better. Yeah. Again, you'll never see Satan offer forgiveness to anybody. Right. And you'll never see the devil promise an eternal life of peace and joy to anybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The reason being is because he is simply incapable of offering anyone peace and joy. Because the devil does not know peace and joy. Mm -hmm. All he knows is wrath. Mm -hmm. And as we see James say there, wrath does not produce righteousness. Mm -hmm. I want you to know and I want you to understand today that the crown of life is truly a one of a kind treat. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that is like it. Mm -hmm. Nothing in this world that is like it. And I tell you, because it is truly a one of a kind treat that we ought to greatly desire that treat. We should be like one of my brother's favorite movie characters. We should be like Charlie in the Willy Wonka movie. Mm -hmm. He, he badly desired y'all laugh, but he, he, he desired that golden ticket. Just ask my brother. Mm -hmm. We, we ought to be just like Charlie. When, when you wake up in the morning, you should desire the treat of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you go to sleep, 
at night yes, yes. The, the treats of God and then this great treat of the crown of life, it ought to be on your mind. Mm -hmm. All right. As we go throughout the day, the, the great treat of God, it be, should be something that drives us, yeah. that pushes us forward. Mm -hmm. We should be living our lives to receive this great treat from God. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We should want the crown of life, and I believe we should want it badly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel I must ask this question today All again. Right. All right. Do you re do you desire the good treat, yeah. the great treat of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you desire the crown of life? Yes. Yes. In scripture, Paul had a very great desire for the crown of life mm -hmm. that he wrote about to the Corinthians. All right. Paul said that athletes compete for a crown that is perishable, mm -hmm. but that we, we come, we, we run for a treat. We run for a crown that is imperishable. Oh, Paul said right. the crown that he was talking about was the crown of life. Mm -hmm. We'll see in his first letter to the Corinthians, how Paul lived this life to ensure that he would receive this crown mm -hmm. in the ninth chapter of first Corinthians in the 25th and the 26th verse. We will see that Paul stated that he ran his race of faith in a manner that he was temperate in all things mm -hmm. so that he could receive the crown. Mm -hmm. What Paul meant there is that he was strict and that he was disciplined in his walk in his run so as not to be distracted mm -hmm. so as not to be hindered so as not to be deterred away from receiving that treat mm -hmm. from receiving that reward paul said that he would not be distracted from taking his eyes off that imperishable crown of life all right so Paul, he ran his race to the reward in a manner where he would not allow the devil's temptations to deter him, to hinder him from that reward. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that we, the true believers, we should go to God's house in the same manner. Wow. We should go to God's house to get this great treat in the same manner as Paul did. Mm -hmm where we do not allow the devil to hinder us, where we do not allow the devil to deter us. In other words, where we do not allow the devil to keep us away from getting the good stuff mm -hmm. from God. Again, I ask you today, trick or treat. All right. Do you desire the false treats of the devil or will you go to God's house for the good treats that he has for you where so many people are being blinded by the devil and his false treats. Let us not fall for the devil's tricks. Mm -hmm. Let us not be distracted today. Okay. Okay. Don't pay that old devil any attention. Right. Don't give him your attention. Mm -hmm. See, we have overcome the devil through Christ. So I tell you today, let us look beyond him. Let us not acknowledge him. Let us not give him any attention that he can leech on. Let us look beyond him to the prize that is at hand. Let us be strict in our faith. Let us keep our eyes. Let us keep our focus. Let us keep our attention on God and his house. Let us get up. Let us run to God's house without being deter, without being hindered. Mm -hmm. And I tell you today that if you are not yet of faith, I encourage you to ignore the false signs. Ignore the whispers from the devil. Mm -hmm. Ignore his treats. Ignore his deceptions and go to God's house. And I tell you, I encourage you today to knock on God's door. 
and enjoy the good treats that God has for you. Amen. 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 Amen.